All right, guys, Tom Aspinall going to be fighting Curtis Blades. That is an awesome fight. For any media inquiries that you need with Tom Aspinall, direct them to me. I'm going to be handling these for Tom for this fight moving forward. Now, while I say that with a little bit of tongue in cheek, guys, this is an incredible fight. Look, if Tom is as good as I say he is, and I do say, this is the, you got to keep your eye on this guy. You absolutely got to keep your eye on this guy. I will share with you, and listen to these words, listen to these words. The hardest fight in the heavyweight division right now for John Jones is Curtis Blades. I am, I'm not ready to word that differently. I'm not ready to tell you guys that absent John Jones, the best heavyweight out there right now is Curtis Blades. I'm not ready to do that, but I'm damn close. I'm not ready to do that. I still believe it's Stipe. And I even have a backstory, and those guys used to chain together, and I know that Curtis has his respect, and Stipe kind of knows what he would do if they would fight. I and mean, I got my own reasons for still putting Stipe there. But Curtis Blades, the hardest time getting over with you, the audience. I really haven't seen anybody in a meaningful period of time that checks as many boxes as Curtis does, and for some reason, there's resistance. And it's not just with you, it's with the media. It's not just with you, it's not just with the media, it's with the fellow opponents. It's not just with you, not just with the media, not just the fellow opponents, it's with the boys in the suits on the second floor of the UFC. It's just one of those things. And it's very hard to explain. He's a handsome guy. He's not afraid to fight. He fought Engano before anybody knew what an Engano was. When he found out what an Engano was, he demanded to fight him again, got on a plane, went to a different continent, fought him again, got the same result, and has ever been, been trying to fight him a third time. We love guys like that. Somebody comes along the way, decides they're going to call him boring. And if you have a national wrestling championship, which Curtis Play does, and somebody decides to go on something the kids call the underground form and label you boring, you're stuck with boring for a little bit. That is the way it works. So Curtis hears this. He doesn't want to be boring. He goes and starts working on his kickboxing. And it's cost him a couple of times. Go see the Derek Lewis fight. But in all fairness, his kickboxing's gotten very good. And when he uses that kickbox, get inside, go back to that wrestling, go back into that pound, start to use that condition. Man, he's a handful. Curtis Blades a pain in the ass. He's an excellent fighter. He is the biggest challenge to John Jones. I would be surprised. If you had John privately, I'd be surprised if John didn't tell you that. If John wouldn't concede to that. He knows I'm looking at the roster. I don't think John's worried to fight him. I don't think that would be the right words. But I will tell you, Curtis Blades, matchup-wise, size-wise, the whole experiments that John's going through, the whole can he take on a bigger guy, can he take on a taller guy, can he take on a guy with his big, long it's Curtis Blades, that's the guy. Now, before that match could ever happen, before you could ever build any hype, for Curtis has got to get through Tom. And the reason I'm building Curtis, the reason I'm shining up right now, I'm, I'm sticking with Tom. I'm sticking with, but I want, I want Tom to get the credit if he can deal with Curtis Blades. If he can get through, this would be monumental. And when the house is on fire for Aspinall, he has turned to a double leg and ground and pound. He did that with Orlovsky in round two. He did last, his last fight with Volkov. It's very relevant. Because making believe that he could go out there and score a takedown on Curtis Blades. I can't remember anybody that's ever taken Curtis down. Can you? I don't remember anybody getting close to taking Curtis down. Can you? And it's not to say that's Tom's only way to go. It's just to say this is a different fight. And I think that Tom is being the one that's being brought along. I think that people are thinking that Tom is going to win. I will share for you when the line comes out on that, and I trust that it already has, and I just haven't gone to DraftKings and looked it up. I will bet you, dollars to donuts, I will bet you Curtis Blades is the favorite. The insiders know what I'm saying is true. Curtis Blades, that's a rough night out. There's a way to beat him. And Tom has the hands, and he's got the power in his hands to do it. But it's a very interesting fight. I want to make sure that we put a lot of focus and a lot of attention on this fight. Because whoever comes out of this is going to be very, very in the short list to be a number one contender. Dana spoke about today, Miocic versus Jones getting those guys together. Now, I thought we did that five months ago, in all fairness. I thought we were just, wait, that was the fight. We're going to do that. We're going to figure out what's going on with Francis. But before we figure out where the contract is, Francis, he's got the right to be out. He's got the knee injury. I, th I thought that we did this dance. I thought that we were there. But the mere fact that the media asked about it and Dana spoke about it, it's like, uh, okay, maybe we weren't. But now it looks like we're getting close. So if you do go the Jones and the Stipe route, once we get that date, it does start to begin, well, who's next? And we're still going to have the question of where's Francis at? 
We got the contract done. How's the knees doing? I understand those things. But you guys understand at some point we're going to get on with it anyway. And matches that are main events or matches that are big matches or the specific match I'm talking about with Curtis Blades and Tom Aspinall, just like that keeps a number one contenders fight. And that sounds right to me. I know Surreal Gon's got some business coming up. I know Tui is the most popular guy in the entire division. But that's a really interesting fight. And Curtis has never done a wonderful job of getting the credit that he deserves. Everything that I just said about Curtis is true. The guy's a national champion. The guy learned how to kickbox. The guy's been in main events. The guy's been getting better. Even the fight that he lost against Derek Lewis, rounds had gone by and he'd won all the rounds. He's a very, he's a very good fighter. And Tom is this rising star. I do think that's going to be a number one contenders fight, but it's only a number one contenders fight if we get behind it. You're only going to get behind it if you know what you're looking at. And it's my job to tell you.